and this is Jonathan Daly for paganpages.org and welcome Nancy Hendrickson Hello, for thank a you. Thank you, chat Jonathan. about the ancestral yes. grimoire. And we have someone here, Patrice. Aloha, Patrice. Hey, Patrice. Aloha, oh, hello, Patrice. Yeah. I'm happy to see you and hear from you today. Love to I you. Know, I know Patrice and Patrice's partner, so cool. Yes, they're beautiful. I love they those They are, too. absolutely. <laughs> Great. Um, so for those of you who don't know, Nancy Hendrickson came out with Ancestral Tarot, and now we have the Ancestral Grimoire. Yeah. So um, do you have a little intro for us as far as the book? Oh, gosh, sure. Um, well, I've been doing ancestral stuff since I was a kid, and I've been doing tarot stuff for 40 years. So it was a, a really natural blend to put the two together. And, you know, if I were a good medium, I could communicate with the ancestors with that tarot, but I'm not. And with, but tarot gives me this very easy portal into the other side of the veil. And uh, that's how I communicate with the ancestors. So for with ancestral tarot, you know, I love that book. It was the hardest book I've ever written. And I've written many. But that was a tough one uh, because I had to be so vulnerable about my own life. And, right. you know, most of us keep this little private part of ourselves inside. But right. it's hard yeah. to take the mask off, right? <laughs> yeah, it totally is hard to take the mask off. But with Ancestral Tarot, I really did. And that just naturally led me into Ancestral Grimoire because I just feel that we have this cheering squad of ancestors with us all the time and they want us to be happy. They want us to have great lives. So I'm hoping people will learn how to tap in with, with those who have gone before us and let them help you, let them help you have a great life. Oh, we have someone else popping in. Hello, Peter J. Watts. Hey, Peter. Hey, I made it this time. As always, I'm sure I'll be learning something huge today. <laughs> well, cool. Cool. Thank you. So, Jonathan, I don't know if you had time to go through grimoire because it takes a while. Uh, right. Well, so I did. What I did was when I review, I kind of skim just so I understand mm -hmm. what each chapter is about yeah. and everything. And I take out little gems here and there. Right. Truthfully, this book was one of the first books that I had to review that I was like, I don't want to just review it. I want to do it. Oh, okay. It was hard for me to review it because I wanted to set it down and gather everything around me and get all the decks and the journal and like get started right away. But right. I was like, no, 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 read it for the review, then start. Yeah. So this month I started with January. Me too. Mm -hmm. Me too. I, as you know, I'm doing a, a ancestral grammar group on Facebook. Yes. Uh, so I, I started just like everybody else. I put aside everything I had done to write the book and just started a f just fresh in uh, January, finding my January ancestor and working on my personal magic. So I, I've loved it. I've, I've had a great, great time doing it. I actually need to get back to it because uh, when I started the January thing, like I was a little taken aback by what, what came through. Um, uh so I had a, a male ancestor whose uh, card was Queen of the Queen of Pentacles, and um, I couldn't quite get a handle on the magic. So what I did was I created a magical skills like oh, cool. template for, pendulum. for yeah. pendulums, right? Yeah. And I've never had a pendulum do this. It went and did three swings on each line, and then started circling all of them. And I was just okay. like. Okay. Oh, that's why I couldn't figure it out because it's like this broad thing. I'm like, wow, okay, uh, I need to digest that for a little bit before I come back to you. Well, you know what? I, th I think we all have the capacity to do all of these skills. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are all better at one or the other. I mean, but I think, I mean, when I look through the 12 different types of exercises, January through December, I can do most of them. I'm not as good at some of them. And so it's not a surprise that you have an ancestor come through who said, yeah, hey man, I can do all this stuff. 
So can right. you? You got it from me was the answer, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it came through mail. Um, so I made supplementary cards, like you say, in the cool. book. Cool. Um, and 15th century card came out. And then uh, when I cre also created a pendulum chart for uh, mapping locations. Got it. Got it. Yeah. And it swung pretty strongly to Europe. So, and then I had a, a name come through. Oh, even better. Edvard is what came Edvard. through. And he said, it's not, it's spelled like Edward, but it's not Edward, it's Edvard. I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm wondering if this is a Scandinavian person or. I don't know that I have any Scandinavian in me, but I know that. Um, Germanic. Germanic blood. So that's what I was thinking maybe Germanic 15th century. Yeah. And you know, what, what's kind of cool about what you're doing is that you have the opportunity to go to Wikipedia and look up Germany 15th century. And, and you're going to find a whole bunch of little states, not the country. So, right. Yeah. Right. Uh, so 15th century, wasn't it? The, it was still the, the, um, the empire, right? The great Roman oh, empire. It, I'm sure it was the empire, and my European history is not good, but I've learned more doing this work. But it's like I had my person for Holy January. Roman That's what Holy Roman Empire. My person uh, for January came up 1600 Switzerland, and I thought, was Switzerland mm -hmm. even a country in 1600? So I'm now doing my research too. You're doing your research, yeah. But see, I happen to know I had Swiss ancestors, so I, I had a, a leg up on you um, mm -hmm. that I knew I knew that they came from Switzerland, but I did not know that it was a magical person. So uh, my mother's side, it's um, Ukrainian and Moldavian, but back okay. then it was just Russia, right? Right. Um, and then the dad, my dad's side, it's... Uh, Irish, French, German, and then there's rumor of Native American, but I've never been able to, like, all the records yeah. got destroyed. I can't really substantiate that. Um, but as far as I know, one of my great great grandmothers may have come from one of those uh, boarding houses or boarding schools for natives. Oh. So, those are horrible places. And again, none of the records survived. And for some reason, they all got burned. So I don't know. Yeah, I can't. I don't know. You have a very native. You have a Native American facial structure. Um, I have a tiny percent of Native American as well. But I'll tell you, it doesn't always show in DNA because it shows in my brother and I, but not my sister. But we all came from the same people. If it's right. tiny, it just may not show up. So what? If you were sitting across the table from me, I would say, Jonathan. So have you been ever drawn to Native American stuff? Oh, always. <laughs> okay. See? And I spend almost every trip in, in the American Southwest to Anasazi ruins, uh, but they're now called, mm -hmm. uh, they're now called ancestral Pueblans, not Anasazi, because I feel, I feel at home there. Mm -hmm. I, I love it. I, I sit and I can hear voices. So, I mean, I know I was there. If not this life, another life. Right. Yeah. And for some reason, spider um, the spider woman's coming through very strong for you. Really? And it's really? Healthy spider woman or um, grandmother spider. Mm -hmm. I, I wish that I had it, but everything's in a box. I When I went to Hopi land on the Hopi mesas, in Northern Arizona, I bought a watch band by a Hopi jeweler and it has inscribed a spider. <laughs> so I'm giving you confirmation of what's coming through for you. Wow. wow. That's good. That's really good. It's just a <laughs> silver band has a spider on both sides. Mm -hmm. Well, grandmother spider loves you. That's for sure. Like, oh, I good. I love really you. strong. Like, good. I love grandmother spider. Yeah. For sure. yeah. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, so you know what's interesting uh, and i know we're kind of going i hope you don't have an agenda because my brain tends to just 
Oh, no. I, my okay. interviews are very open-ended because I like okay. to let the conversation okay. flow as it will. Okay. So the whole thing about the Ukrainian and Moldavian, et cetera, you know, if you go to since, censuses of like 1920, it's really common to see, you know, your country of origin, Poland slash Russia, Romania slash Russia. I mean, Russia mm -hmm. controlled so much of that part of the world. And I think when you're tracking your family, it can be hard because you don't know what it was in that time period unless you're, you know, digging the history. Mm -hmm. So do you feel a, a kinship to Ukraine? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, well, I kind of, the thing is, I grew up hearing a lot of stories about my ancestors from the old country because yeah. my grandparents mm -hmm. were first generation Americans. Um, okay. so, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, so. And did, did, they, did they come from Ukraine, those grandparents? Uh, their parent, uh, my grandfather, my mother's side's parents came from Ukraine. Um, and then my mom's mom's parents came from what we would call Moldov or Moldavia. Oh, yeah. Moldavia. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure about my dad's side. I haven't dived as deep over there. It, it's hard once you leave the U.S. because you better be able to read in Ukrainian. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I find that research really tough. And yeah. if you go to Ireland, you better be good at going through church records because that's where everything mm -hmm. was a parish record until fairly late in the 1900s. I mean, late 1800s, mm -hmm. 1800s. Yeah. There was even some records all the way up to like the what, 1940s or 50s that were only in churches in Ireland over there. Yeah, yeah very much so. But, you know, at least if you have, well, so were your grandparents, did your grandparents were the immigrants or your great grandparents? No, great grandparents. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm. So, um, at least you have a few generations of uh, America to dig into, I suppose. Right. I don't know about your other, your dad's side of the family, though. Um, well, my my aunt on that side has a pretty good genealogy oh. knowledge, oh. so I always yeah. ask her if I have questions. Um, and she she's the one that was doing research into the Native American background and. Oh, wow. um, she was the one that kept coming up against like, well, all the records were burned. Well, all the records were burned. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Wow. Not surprising. Not surprising. Peter asks, what voice do you hear in your head? Does it have an accent? Your voice or mine? <laughs> um, so I don't necessarily hear voices per se. It's more images and just knowings. <laughs> Like and I, see, see, I see an image and I have a knowledge of what the image is. That's kind of how it yeah. comes through for me. And so I do. I don't really hear that so much. Yeah. Yeah. I do hear voices, but my fan, I mean, that sounds weird, but I do hear, I do hear, but my family has been in America since the late 1600s. So they all sound either British or American. Uh, I mean, it's been really hard. We, uh, I'll just say this is a very brief, weird story. We brief, we just recently found the guy, the first guy who came to America, who got sent here as a convict because he stole tobacco off the wharfs of a ship in London, and so he got sent here for seven years to be an indentured servant. And so that was the, that's the first guy, but that was late sixteen hundreds, early seventeen hundreds. But, um, you know, are you, I, I am clear audience. I do hear, I don't see, do you, you, it sounds like you see. Yeah. It, and it's not so much seeing anymore. It's more of just a knowing clear yeah. sentience kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, I do have the, the visuals occasionally. That's what I used to do a lot, but then I don't know if you know much about Chinese medicine, but I got my ears pierced right where the eyes are supposed to be. Really? I mean, stop, stop seeing as much. Really? Now, I know about ear acupuncture, but I mm. didn't, 
I, I didn't know that was where your so eye. So if you look at the ear, picture yeah. it as an upside down fetus. Got it. Got there's it. the okay. spine, and then like here's got the it. head, right? Oh yeah, there's so the eye. where the ear, where the where most people get the ears pierced is is the point that corresponds to the eye. If you're doing, because you can use just the ear to get a full body treatment. Really? Oh. And the spot where everyone gets their ears pierced, that's the eye point. And I didn't just get my ear pierced. I got it, like I got it pierced at 10 gauge. So like that whole piece is missing. Wow. Um, no. So, but your, your so third for eye. years I didn't see anymore. I just was getting a knowing. Like, it's like, it's like someone would ask a question and the answer would just pop out of me. Um, wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it's and more so like that. And now okay. that I'm like, now that I put amethyst in, I don't have metal in my ears. Um, <sighs> it's definitely the visions are coming back. And I and so for you, like the I just saw Grandmother Spider standing behind you, and you were kind of caught in the web a little bit. Is the best way to describe it. Not like mm -hmm. caught, but like the web was part of you. Which is really interesting because a lot of people see spider as the animal for a writer. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I don't, okay. If there's spiders in the house, I invite them to leave or I pick them up and put them outdoors. I don't mind them. I just don't want them crawling around on me. So, but I love the grandmother right. spider. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I just got it so strong when you were talking about Anastasia. I was like, oh, that's where you, that's where you two met. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so for people who are just getting started with ancestral work, do you think it'd be better to start with your first ancestral book or is it okay to just jump right in? It's okay to jump right in because they are two they are really standalone books. They are not one they after are. the other. Yeah, they are. Totally. But I do find that when I'm working on this, sometimes I want to reach in here for a spread um, that you introduced. So. Um, and now that's, guess that's, I, the, that's the connection for me. Yeah, then that makes total sense. But Grimoire was really designed. Well, let me back up a second. We are all in this mystical, magical community. And it one day, like the penny dropped in my brain and it said, well, we're not all here just coincidentally. I think we all have magical bloodlines, either this life or another life. And that's why we are so drawn to the mystical, magical community. And so I started thinking about all the different types of magic and the book covers 12 things. There are God knows how many more, but you know, you have, you have to be practical. Um, and so it's it, the book is an invitation that says, take 12 months, work through these 12 different kinds of magic. You may hate some of them. You may be amazing at some of them. Some of them you may have zero interest and blow right past that month. That's okay. You know, I, I'm not a rules bound person. Um, so that's how Grimoire actually came into being is I thought, we're all incredibly magical, but I don't think we know how potent our magic is. Right. So try these things, you know, go out and talk to the land spirits, go out and talk to a neighborhood cat. I mean, it is amazing if you're open, all the stuff that comes flooding in. Mm -hmm. you now we right. really, we are sponge like in our ability to take in all of the omens that are around us, but a lot of times we think, okay, I'm a tarot reader, period. And I go through my day like I'm asleep. Right. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> don't go through your day asleep. The signs are everywhere. You just have to be open to them. Totally. I mean, you know, I, I was I was over uh, actually around the Grand Canyon. And I looked up in the sky and I just out of my mouth, just like that, I said, oh, my God, the fairies are dancing today. And it wasn't like I saw fairies or anything. It was just this flood of the fairies are dancing today. What a wonderful day. And I think that we just get out of the habit or we forget. I think we remember when we're kids. I think we forget. Right. Yeah. One of my very first uh, magical teachers said that 
the most magical people he knew were kids. And as we grow older, we lose our magic. Yeah. You know, there's a wonderful, wonderful book about kids' memories of the life, either another life or life before this life. And it, it, it said mm -hmm. that kids tend to lose that connection about the age of five. And but before that, they're totally tuned in. And I've seen that in kids in my own family, that uh, my five-year-old great nephew, from the age, as soon as he could talk, he called my grand, he called my sister Badu. And if you look it up, it is some African name. And he's always called her Badu. And it's like, okay, obviously, I think you guys were in some African life together. Uh, but where, where does that come from? That's not like grandma or granny or nana or anything. Badu. Mm -hmm. So it's Badu. Badu. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, that sounds like a past life memory. I'm very, oh, it's one of my passions. I, I'm actually, I do past life regressions for people. Um, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Because and, I, I love it. I, I look, tell me, see, now I get oh, to interview in you. In the before times, I, more about I, I was an acupuncturist at a, a day spa. And um, they had a little space for classes. And they wanted me to do spiritual classes. So I was like, well, I could start doing group past life regressions, right? And so, yeah, it was amazing. Well, it's funny too, because a lot of times people who come expecting a past life regression end up just falling asleep and having a good nap. And oh, wow. people who weren't expecting anything had like these intense like experiences. Wow. Like there was a mother daughter uh, duo that came to one of these and the daughter was a yoga teacher all into it. Like so yeah. ready to see her past life. And the mom was just, you know, there to support her daughter right the daughter um checked out like she says i don't know what happened i just checked out completely i wasn't there i wasn't here i was nowhere i was like okay and then meanwhile her mom who was a complete spectator did not believe in any of this stuff had a vivid memory of being her own grandmother okay so i guess her grandmother passed long before she was born and wow. she had this memory of being her grandmother, like stirring a pot, and her dad was her son pulling on her apron strings. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So, so tell me this. Tell me this. Because um, I do talk about past lives in the book as, as a form of personal magic that when you tap into another life, how well does it work doing it in a group? I've never experienced it in a group. So my very first past life regression was a group session and I was 13, almost 14. Um, and it was, I think it was more powerful because of the group, because everyone was there like for the same purpose. So okay. they, all of them were like bringing their energy into the ritual. Um, and I found that in the group sessions, they definitely, I don't know, having other people around seems to help others go deeper than they would just by themselves um because during the pandemic i was doing the past life regression through zoom um oh, okay and i mean it was still working but i didn't feel quite that same connection as being in the same space yeah. right yeah. um and then uh one of the things i was actually going to do before the pandemic hit was i was creating my own style of acupuncture specifically for past life regressions and um i gotta get my license renewed but um once that's all all the legality stuff is out of the way then i want to get back into acupuncture past life regression because I, I i got five of those in before i had to like take a hiatus and of those five people four of them remember their past life name not just like um like a, and they got like almost the whole life as a download how did you how did you figure out what acupuncture point to use? Well, um, so I've been an acupuncture. I started acupuncture school in two thousand three, um, and I did TCM traditional Chinese medicine. I also did uh, five element acupuncture. I learned a little Japanese acupuncture, um, and then there was a guy that came in when we were uh, still learning, and he had created his own style of acupuncture called tree acupuncture where he did the same points on the person and then did had everyone bring in a tree and then they put the tree at the foot of the bed and uh 
they would put the put the needles in the person and then thread a copper wire through all the needles and then one end would be attached to a needle that was in the tree's trunk and the other end was attached to a needle that was in a tree in the tree's branch and so, it was well, a connection between the person and the tree so that the energy right would flow, right right um and he said that certain people like Every time they came in, their tree was healthier and brighter and bigger. And other people had to get a new tree for every session because after their mm -hmm. session, the tree would die. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was very, okay. so, so having those experiences and um, being exposed to that kind of like open-ended idea of what acupuncture actually is, because there's so many styles of acupuncture. There's the ear acupuncture where you treat the whole body, which just points in the ear. There's Korean hand acupuncture, the same thing where it's like, this right. is the whole body. You could treat the whole body with just needles in the hand. Um, so having that kind of experience, I started thinking about all the spiritual points I'd learned and how there's certain points like to help with memory. There's certain points that help like activate the crown chakra, third eye chakra, help, help ground you. So I figured out exactly which points I wanted to use. I have a prescription of points and I always use gold needles for the person. Okay. Yeah. So if you, once it, the needles are in, I do guided meditation. Okay, so once, so you have the points. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you choose the same points for each person? Well, I have a like a general list of points, and there are certain points that I pretty much do for everyone. So, like the memory activating certain chakras oh, okay okay but then other points either they call to me or tell me that they, they're not needed um and that's more like grounding points um points for opening the heart chakra if that's a little too close off um yeah kind of like that you know since i use tarot in, in ancestral grimoire i'm thinking you could use acupuncture for ancestral work I bet you could. I see no reason you couldn't. That would be amazing. It'd be a branching out of this idea I have of the, the acupuncture past life progression, for sure. It, it um, would be. Well, and the thing that I found during, like, with all my work in this field is that past lives and ancestors, there's not really, a, like, a defining no. line between the two. No. Um, no, because I always say you don't know that you weren't your own ancestor. I mean, right. we like your client who was her own grandmother. Right. Well, literally her own grandmother. I was just like, right. oh, yeah. 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 And I think when you do past life work, I think that it gets to this very fuzzy area that you really don't know. <clears throat> Are you your own ancestor? in this life from another life or uh, you know it, it gets really fuzzy and i don't i don't have an explanation for how to know yes or no right yeah really don't know. i always just assume that it's a yes because of the experiences i've had just of no yeah okay. i have like so when i was 13 and we did that past life a group past life regression mm -hmm. it kind of triggered something in me where i'd have past life memories just kind of bubble up randomly yeah. or i'd be doing like this talking to someone about past lives and suddenly the two of us who remember a past life together and so at this point i've got like i don't know i feel like i have quite the plethora of past lives like memories me in, my, in my storehouse me too and um interestingly enough during these group sessions i also had a woman who says she always does everything like different than anyone else. She, instead of going to a past life, went to a future life. <laughs> okay. okay. So, and which is interesting because my aunt for Christmas bought, I, I don't know if you've read the Many Lives, Many Masters. Yes, absolutely. Years ago. Right. Same here. I read it in like the 80s, 90s. Yeah, like long time um, ago. She sent me a book from the same author who did that one, and it was called Same Soul, Many Lives or something. Yeah, I haven't read that. Yeah. Same Soul, Many Bodies. That's what it was. Okay. And what it was was it's um, – I don't have it with me. 
It's a book specifically uh, looking into how you can help deal with this life's issues by seeing how your future self is dealing with it. Interesting. And so that book, I haven't had a chance to even crack it yet, but that book's all about like, instead of doing past life regressions, <laughs> doing future life regressions. Well, you know, when you do, when you do ancestral work, you do see f not only family patterns, but patterns you have carried through many lifetimes. So it makes total sense that if you don't deal with an, a problematic <laughs> pattern, it's going to just scoot on to the next life. So it makes a lot of sense to do that. Plus, you know, I, I am a believer in parallel universes. So I don't know that one of my universes isn't 100 years, 300 years, 1,000 years in the future. I don't know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get it. I'm, I'm also like a believer of parallel worlds. Yeah. Uh, parallel timelines, so to speak. <laughs> well, they are. You know, I uh, my mom lived in an apartment and she, well, number one, I have to say she was very psychic and tuned into things, but she was sitting in her living room and, and saw a young woman like modern day walk from the bedroom to the bathroom across the hall. And I said, mom, you know, there's a parallel universe here and somebody else is living in your apartment. And I slept on her couch one night and I woke up and there was a little girl standing right like this far away from me. And it's like, uh, okay, I don't know who's living in this apartment, but there is some time bump, something happened. Mm -hmm. And you know, I don't want to go Star Trekky and talk about, you know, whatever a, a time distortion. Yeah, so uh, it is fascinating. Or as I call them, vortexes. <laughs> a vortex. Well, yeah, it could be a vortex. Um, yeah, unknown to me, unknown. but right. obviously the portals open somewhere. The mm -hmm. portal is open somewhere, but you know what? I've also gone to places that I knew that if I took one wrong step, I would be in another time period. I mean, it was so mm -hmm. strong that it's like I would back up because I'm not taking that next step. Right. Right. Uh, but it's such a strong feeling. And and these are the kind of things I, I'm just going to circle back to the whole thing about omens is walking through the world awake and paying attention to what's around you, paying attention to what you feel, hear, see. Um, right. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think of myself as being pretty open. I mean, there's always those times where you're just like so focused that you're just like, I can't see anything else. But um, yeah, I try and be as open as possible. And before we moved to Hawaii, uh, we were definitely getting signs from the universe that we needed to go, we needed to move here. Um, like anytime I got cut off in traffic, the person had some sort of Hawaii sticker on the back of their car yeah. I'd stop at an ATM to get out some cash. And there's like an ad really big ad right next to the ATM save your Hawaii vacation now or something. And just like, well, see, and, I and go you, to the gym and I look over and there's a guy with like Hawaiian islands on his arm, like right next to me. And it just was like over and over and over. Exactly. exactly. And you know what? I, I don't know if spirit gets tired of sending us messages that we ignore. I, I don't know the answer to that. But I, I do try and if to pay attention to things like that. So was it a good thing for you to go oh, to Hawaii? That was uh, 2010 we moved here. We tried moving away for a little bit, and Mama Maui was like, nah, -uh, come back, come back. <laughs> okay. Okay, so you paid attention. Uh, you know, I do feel like we have, as I said, the cheering section, who's always wanting to help, encourage, give us signs of, of what's next that's good for us. Because sometimes we are just so ignorant. We don't know what's good for us. You know, we have some idea, but I, I'm not sure we know as good as they know. Right. What's well, the old adage of like, the thing that's good for you might not taste good. So you're going to go for the thing that does that's not good for you because it tastes great. And, uh, <laughs> oh yeah. Or, you know, also you get into the asking for this or something better. Right. Because we don't, we can't often see the something better. I don't think we can. Right. I mean, and if you open to not just that one thing, yeah. but open to whatever possibility comes from that. 
Yeah. And you know, if you if you'd sat down 10 years ago and plotted out your life, I doubt that it would look anything like this. Mine would not. I know. So, uh, you know, again, whether it's ancestral stuff or a spirit guide or angels, whatever your belief system, you know, pay attention, keep open. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Keep open. You know, my partner and I did a, a podcast sometime in the end of last year. And we talked about the danger of going through life of kicking back in your easy chair and not being open. Uh, it's so easy for you to be manipulated if you just sit there and, and you just, you don't put your yourself or your energy or your spirit into what you're doing. You just let you life happen. Yeah. You just let life happen to you. Uh, mm -hmm. What a drag. It's like jumping in a boat with no oars or no rudder and, <laughs> And go down wherever the river wants to take you, you know. Right. Maybe maybe there are some days that feels good, other days not so much. <laughs> I, I know we've gone far afield of what you wanted to Oh, that's okay. About. I will drag us back over to okay. the Okay. Do you have any specific uh I know you have like a little list of decks at the beginning specifically for I do. Um, ethnicities, but do you have like any general uh, decks you would recommend. Well, you know what? I use Carrie Paris's relative tarot only because, uh, yeah, you got it right there. And I've, I've got a card right here. And mm -hmm. for me, that is the ancestral deck that I love using. Yeah. And I know a lot of people who, especially if they're in the UK, they love using Druid craft or Wildwood because it is UK centric culturally, excuse me. Um, but I do, I do have lists of other cultural decks, uh, but you know, Rider Waite, Rider Waite's great. I don't love it for ancestral work. It just doesn't okay. speak to me. And uh, maybe with relative tarot, which you have, maybe it's the coloration or the old fashioned Right. I did a, a thing on Instagram, not this year, but the year before on Halloween, just doing free ancestral messages. And I used that mm -hmm. deck and, and it was mind boggling how accurate the information was, even to the point of, of flipping a card and saying, this is from a Norwegian fisherman ancestor. And the person typed in saying, oh my God, we have a Norwegian elk hound and we're pretty sure we're from Norway, but that Norwegian guy just came through like that with that deck. I think it's a great deck. It's a great deck for sure. Yeah. Another one that I, so the relative to row is the one I chose to uh, tear apart into three, three different decks for the, the grimoire. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to keep them separated and this, that's what I'm going to use this deck for. But as far as another deck that's all mixed together still, it's Peter J. Watts is here. Um, Ancestral yeah, Path. Ancestral right? Path. Yeah. But and that, you, have, you have the new version, the big yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. I've been wanting the old one because of the book. But right. I ended up just getting this because it was so hard to get the old one. So Yeah, I have both. Of, Julie Kusha Watts. Another deck I don't have out uh, that I would use for ancestral work is actually the Ma'at Tarot. I know that deck. Yeah. Yeah. That's another good one. And, you know, I like Ancestral Path. I think for some people it throws them a little because, right. you know, there's a Japanese Arthurian England. I'm kind of blanking out because I haven't used it for a while. Help Native me out here. And Native, Native American. Native American are pentacles. And, uh, I use that deck when I've used it because I love the Native American. See, we're both drawn to Native American. I love that imagery. It's so beautiful. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's why um, I like them a lot because it's it's more of a blend of things. And it's not yeah. like yeah. yeah. Um, I recently got a deck. I haven't even used it yet, but we went to uh there's a place here on Maui called the Death Store. And okay. it's green alternative funerary kind of stuff so oh, they do okay. burials at the 
um, you know, buried in a plain wood box, even cardboard box. Um, right. And they're looking into maybe getting land to do the like be planted the tree, with, the with tree, the tree thing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. yeah. Um, but it's interesting because I went there, and of all the decks they could have had, they had this. Sitting That's on the <laughs> yeah. Right. And I was like, I'm about to get into the ancestor grimoire. And the ancestors like pick that up, get it, get it. <laughs> so I'm well, gonna have to a, integrate it's that. A beautiful deck. You know, there's also I don't know if you ever read Le Normand, Lenormand. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a Santa Muerta Lenormand that came out oh. this past year. That's okay. also really beautiful. I'll have to look for it. And Carrie yeah. Paris, who did Relative Tarot, and I did a Kickstarter for the Ofrenda Oracle which is yes. the offering and it's it's very based on day of the dead mm -hmm. Partial, i mean I it's, <laughs> yeah I, oh cool thank you i i think we're going to have the decks in a month you know and you can everybody ignore this if you want to but uh the printer printed it and the colors were, were wrong so that threw us back a month uh, but right. you know we were both pretty persnickety about it needs to be right it needs to be right. Yeah. So next month, I think they're all shipping out. So I'll be happy. Yeah. 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 I actually interviewed uh, Carrie over okay. on my channel about oh, cool. the relative. I almost got the relative when it, it was the Kickstarter version. Yeah. I'm kicking myself for not doing so. But you know what? The deck that came with the Kickstarter is in process of being done commercially by Wiser, who did relative. Oh. So if you missed, it's called the Spirit Oracle. If you missed right. out on it, you're still going to be able to get it. Oh, uh, okay. No, I'm not so able, sad. Yeah. So, That's exactly yeah. why I was sad because I got finally got the deck, but I didn't get the deck and the Oracle. The Oracle. Well, now you can. Cool. Good yeah. to know. Yay. You'll be happy. <laughs> happy. And I'm looking cool. forward to the Ofrenda too. Oh, you know what? I love that deck, but you know, I, I live on the border. I've lived on the border most of my life with Mexico and every October I go to San Diego's old town and there are altars everywhere. You are invited to put a picture of a loved one on anybody's altar. And it's just such a joyous, it is a joyous time of year in Mexican culture. And I, I love it. And the ofrenda, I think, you can see that in the ofrenda cards they're very joyous yeah yeah it's a celebration people are always like oh day of the dead oh scary it's not scary yeah. it's, 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 scary. A, it's really a celebration it's the remembrance mm -hmm. of people that you loved right going to, they're like they're having picnics in the cemetery they are having picnics in the cemetery that's true Yes, and I mean, they're having their picnics with their loved ones that are buried there. I know. So. But you know what? If you look back to imagery of eight, late 1800s, early 1900s America, there are pic people took picnics to cemeteries. It's not just a Mexican belief. Right. It was very common at the turn of the, not this century, the other century. Um, <laughs> There's great pictures of people, women in their giant hats and beautiful dresses sitting on a blanket in a cemetery. So it's not so not, weird. Not so weird. No, it's not. I, I've heard of, uh, oh, what is the name of it? It's a, it's a tribe in, I want to say the Philippines, who every year around, San, I think it's around the same time as Day of the Dead, um, they literally will dig up the relatives to like give them a yes. bath and change their clothes and yeah i'm not doing that with them, but yeah yeah no. that's I'm that's taking it to the next level <laughs> that's the next level but i think part of it's just our culture jonathan we are you know two generations ago people died and were laid out in the parlor and people were closer to death and now you know it's like we're it's so sanitized and we're so removed right. from it that it's like, oh man, that's like too creepy. We're no. sanitizing and move from everything. Well, Death, life, nature, I mean. And, <laughs> yeah, especially nature, and, and this will be my last thing I'm gonna say about uh, nature, but because one section in the book is on elemental magic. So it's, it does have to do with working with nature, but 
I was in Colorado and there's this beautiful forest, beautiful rivers, and you go down the road and everything is fenced off. And it's like, I, I, can we please let me get down to those trees and that water? But you can't because everybody wants their ownership and we're going to fence all this beautiful land off from you. Too bad. Well, it's not just the fencing. I find that also a lot of places, especially with the when they got their power wires up in the air, mm -hmm. it's like, where's my Vista? It's getting all chopped up because of all these wires going across. I know. The I know. I know. So, that is like, really true. I know you get out Photoshop and remove all the wires. That's not quite the same, though. That's not the same. Yeah. Anyway. Not. <laughs> so have I have I answered your grimoire question? Oh like yeah, that? definitely. Um, so do you have any other tips, tricks for? You know, uh, I will just say one of the months May actually is about lunar magic, and it's about moon magic. And I noticed this morning we are in a waxing gibbous moon which is just one step from a full moon and i i looked back there this morning so i was interested the it, we start with an idea a magical idea at the new moon and it culminates up to the full moon so waxing gibbous is just before full so i would suggest that people today or hopefully when they listen to this during a waxing gibbous that you actually draw a card for what's keeping me from that last step of getting that full moon mm -hmm. intention. Uh, what's stopping me and what can I do about it? So that's my waxing gibbous tip for the day. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank yeah. you. Thanks. Thank you for that. Thanks, Jonathan. Yeah. Um, so the uh, other tip is make sure you get a nice little book. Yes. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Don't forget your journal. And it doesn't have to be this nice. This is one that I've I've had for years that's just been sitting on the shelf waiting to be used. So well, you know, someone someone in the grimoire group said the same thing. They've had this beautiful journal sitting on the shelf. And it's like, oh yeah, I think I've been saving that for this. I didn't know yeah. it. So good. I don't even know how long I've had this journal, truthfully. It's been probably good. At least five or six years. <laughs> uh, well, good luck with your January ancestor. And oh, thank you. I want to say one thing before we go. I've noticed people have a real problem with, let's say they draw the Knight of Cups. Is that a woman? Is that a man? And I encourage people to, I saw that, you know, you had the male female symbol on your cards. Mm -hmm. You know, I encourage people to use that, but also to be open to listening what the ancestor tells you. I actually did um, three uh, gender cards, male, female, okay. and question mark. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because uh, one person in my group drew what they thought was a male, but they were positive it was a female. And I said, you know, Native American and other cultures have what they call two spirits. Two spirits. Mm -hmm. And maybe that person is both or neither. So and that's both. why I put the question mark in for that both yeah. or neither, right? The that question. Was good. That was smart. Yeah. Well, because I, I've considered myself a two spirit yeah. forever. So yeah. As soon as I heard the concept of two spirit, I'm like, oh, that's me. Finally, I understand it now. Yeah. 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 So I, I think it's great. And thank you for the invite to Pagan oh, Pages. I really oh. appreciate it. We just had this. Interesting little comment pop up. Hi, Angie. Totally dreamed of certain parts of this interview. I remember trying to explain that dream to my little family. Thanks. Whoa, cool. <laughs> I love that. That's cool. Thank you for that. I, I think Angie was having a uh, future life dream. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. So cool. Premonition. I used to have yeah. those premonition dreams all the time. Really? I don't know why they <laughs> Boy, maybe because you pierced your ear in the wrong place. Yeah, actually, I used to have all kinds of dreams, and I barely dream anymore. Wow. I used to remember like four or five vivid dreams every night. And then really? This I haven't really remembered. Okay. I remember dreams here and there, but it's not not mm -hmm. like it was. Oh, okay. So. Well, maybe time to take those out. I don't know if you're ready. I don't think you're ready. Holes to close, I'd have to mm -hmm. like have surgery to like get it oh, stitched no, together. No, no. So I'm no. just not going any bigger. <laughs> okay. Good, good, good idea. 
So, and thank you <laughs> to the people who were here in person or who came late or, or who are watching the playback. Watching yes. the playback. Thank you. And thank you, Jonathan. It's been great. Thank you, Nancy. You're welcome. If you just want to wait one moment, thank you everyone for being here. Thank you, paganpages.org, for hosting us. And we look forward to our next interview. Keep an eye out for that. Thank you, everyone. Aloha. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.